Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. 2018 Fireballs here, back with another MLB 9 Innings 22 video. In today's video, we're going to be going over the two brand new updates come to us just released today, uh, live update number 7, as well as the brand new 7.0.8 update. Uh, it's not as big as the last update video that I did, but uh, it does include some significant changes, and I thought it'd be important to go over them with you guys. So if you do enjoy this type of uh, video, do leave a like down below and subscribe to the channel. Um, if you want to see more update videos, please let me know in the comments down below. I'd be more than happy to do them. Uh, but without further ado, let's get into the two new updates that come to us drop today, starting with the seventh live update. Uh, now with the live update, uh, the usual things uh, come in this update, player uh, stats have been changed as well as some unique stances and faces, but uh, bigger and better than that. Uh, so let's just start here. The uh, So let's read. Gre greetings from Comtos. To provide you with a more exciting and realistic gaming experience, MLB 9 Innings 22 will proceed with a 7 live update on June 29th, 3 a.m. Eastern Time. So on June 29th, everybody should have gotten this update. And this is the big thing right here. Comtos dropped 51 new signature players in the game. Majority of them are vintage SIGs, but as you can see, they added Mike Messina, Napoli, uh, Chris Snyder, BJ Ryan, and just a bunch of other uh, vintage SIGs that I don't even know who these guys are. The only vintage SIG I know here is Phil Necro, but uh, pretty impressed with how many new SIGs they add. Uh, too bad it wasn't a prime update. Anyway, 51 new signature players, uh, ranging from all these in this list that you can see here. Uh, the Dodgers, I have to point out, did get two new closing pitchers, uh, which is amazing for Dodgers teams. Uh, that's really the only department that their teams are lacking in, and they could really use some relief pitchers, so uh, good for Dodgers teams. For Houston teams, looking at this, uh, Joe Sambito, he is already a vintage in the game, so they gave him a sig, which is nice, but uh, I don't personally like it when they give primes signatures. Um, just free-to-play teams uh, kind of makes it a second-best card now, so... For my free to play Houston team, kind of disappointed. They added a Billy Wagner card, but if I do pull his prime, I'd still be happy. Uh, he does get a sig now, though, for his 1999 season. Uh, so it's not it's not going to be the same as his prime card. Uh, so you guys can check his stats out in the collection. Uh, you, you should be able to see all of the new stats and new cards in the collection uh, under challenges when you look at the home screen. Uh, also, to mention for Toronto teams, they added Mark Eichhorn. Now, Mark Eichhorn is the best overall relief pitcher in the game. Uh, he does have a tad bit high uh, stamina. I believe it's at 59, but as a SIG, he is now the best signature relief pitcher in the game. I'm um, pretty sure that's his same year. If it's not, somebody correct me, but I'm pretty sure that is. Uh, so good for Toronto teams. They do get a SIG for Eichhorn. Uh, also, so as you can see, a majority of the pitchers are vintages and not pitchers, but just SIGs in general are vintages. And majority of them are actually closing pitchers, now that I, I look at it. But on the right side here, you can see there are new, uh, 19 new regular signature cards. Uh, regular meaning uh, modern day signature cards, uh, ranging from Zach Grinke in Kansas City to Roy Oswalt. Uh, kind of disappointed about the Roy Oswalt sig. Again, uh, he does have a prime for Houston, so it kind of makes the prime useless unless you, uh, you know, pull the sig. So, uh, good for Oswalt, though. He, he does deserve a SIG, in my opinion. Just his prime becomes second second fiddle now. Uh, Colorado got a decent amount of new SIGs. Arizona got some new SIGs as well. Uh, glad that Mike Napoli got a SIG. I'm surprised they didn't give him a Red Sox or an Angel SIG, uh, especially since he had some pretty decent years with the Red Sox and the Angels. He already does have a Cleveland card in 2016. So, uh, to give him a Texas card, though, is amazing the rangers decks are desperate for any sigs at this point rangers uh teams I've, I've looked in the collection before and it's just signature cards are really really lacking so uh, glad they got a signature he does have a prime as well but in my opinion this one's not as bad brian wilson also got a signature card uh, for the san francisco giants it's also his prime year so free to play uh giants teams uh have second fiddle with that prime uh wilson but nothing to be ashamed of joel hanrahan another familiar name uh but more uh big the biggest one is probably mike messina for new york teams i know jad was excited about this um just starting pitcher for the yankees j.a hap retired paxton's out of the game 
Uh, so many starting pitchers like Tanaka are just no longer in the game anymore. It's nice to see that they add uh, older signature card Mike Messina. Uh, it's kind of hard to pick sigs for the Yankees in this era because of the steroids and everything, like a Roger Clemens sig or uh, David Wells, uh, other cards like that. But good for um, Yankees teams to have Mike Messina, uh, just even more stacked now. Uh, Zach Greinke, like I said, has a signature for the Royals cards, uh, Royals decks. Uh, kind of takes away from the prime card, like I've said before, though. Uh, but other than that, that's pretty much all for the SIG cards and my opinions on those takes. Um, like I said, the live players are now updated. There are new pictures, new stances, new animations. And if you guys want, you can check that out all on your own. Uh, that's just my take on the seventh live update. But now getting into the more important things and the bigger um, additions to the game. Now, these haven't come out yet. Uh, let's read here. It says in the red, please update the game to the latest version as previous versions may be restricted after the update on June 30th, 3 a.m. Eastern Time. So at the current moment, it is June 28th, and these, this update has not come out yet for the um, new UIs and the new things that will be listed in this update. So make sure uh, you guys update what is already um, listed in the Play Store. And then on June 30th, be sure to check the Play Store or the App Store again for the new update. Anyway, moving onward, Arcade Mode is the first thing that they talk about. And let's read here. The improved Arcade Mode will be applied after Season Change on July 4th. So uh, this will come later uh, than the update on June 30th, obviously. So on July 4th is another date to make mention of. Uh, reading on, and the current version of Arcade Mode will be available until Season Change. Uh, season change meaning the end of the baseball season uh, when the new 2023 update comes out. So that's not until probably January of next year. Only the ball, only the ball UI on the arcade mode preparation page will be available after the update. All right. So as you can see here, the UI has has been improved. You can see the pitcher of the week on the right side there, as well as your batter. And then reading on, you can earn additional experience when playing with the batter of a certain position of the day. So this is definitely new. It's a way to motivate players to play arcade mode more, and rightfully so. I haven't played arcade mode in who knows how long, but uh, I probably still won't be able to play it with just the amount of teams I run. But for uh, new players with just one team or two teams, uh, this is pretty exciting here. The So on, as you can see on Monday, if you use a first baseman, for batters in arcade you will get additional x xp to the leveling up in the ranking system and then on tuesday second baseman you use you'll get more xp third baseman on wednesday short stops on thursday uh, dhs and catchers on friday and then outfielders on saturday and then sunday is crunch time free for all use any batter that you want use your best batter and get the best um points scoring in arcade mode for the end of the week uh also the previous add time item has been changed. So before, as you can see in the red box here, or the red boxes, the add baseball item has replaced the add time item. And now that is because arcade mode has basically become uh, a ripoff of Wii Sports. I'm, I'm, I'm joking there, but basically that's kind of what it is now. Let's read. It says the add time item in your possession will be changed to the add baseball item after the season change on July 4th, 12 a.m. Eastern time. So it says you can get one additional hit chance by using the add baseball item. You can check the number of arcade mode balls on the preparation page, as you can see in the bottom right of the picture that they have right there. Uh, five out of five, still the same. And on the preparation page, and you can charge balls with the arcade ball recharge ticket, as always. So looking at this new picture here. There is no longer a time limit on arcade. You no longer have 40 to 45 seconds to hit as many balls and get as many points. It is now a restricted. You have 30 balls to hit, and how many ever you hit out of those 30 uh, will accumulate in what your score will be. Let's read what it says down here. When playing arcade mode, the time limit has been removed and the 30 hit chances are given. The remaining chances will be displayed on the top of the page, as you guys see in the picture. The perfect reward will be removed but the timing record will remain. I'm not exactly sure what that means. Uh, I'm, I'm, it, I'm guessing it means that you won't get any bonuses for hitting uh, greats, uh, perfect, or good like they uh, had in the previous arcade mode, but it will still tell you what your timing is. Um, 
the reward will be removed, but it will still identify like if you hit the ball perfect, great, or good. Um, kind of pointless, but anyway, moving on. Combo will now start from one when you hit the first ball successfully. So the combo uh, system works the same, I'm pretty sure, as far as getting more points as, as the higher uh, your combo is. And it also says the burst gauge system will be changed. So this burst gauge gauge on the left will also change here. It says two burst balls will be activated when reaching six combos. So my interpretation of that, when you hit six balls in a row, it will automatically give you two burst balls on the left. So no longer do you have to hit. Um, if you hit a perfect, it will give you more uh, boost to the burst gauge. Uh, if you hit great, it will give you a little bit less, and then good will give you the least. Uh, as long as you hit consecutive balls in a row, six consecutive balls, uh, it'll give you uh, two burst balls. Now, I'm not sure if this is cumulative or it's every six. So if you hit 12, I'm not sure if that'll increase to four. I'm pretty sure it won't because it's not said in the instructions here in the description. So every time you hit a six combo, first six you'll get two, next six you'll get two. And um, I'm going to assume it's pretty hard to get 18 in a row. So if you hit 18 in a row, um, you're probably just going to get two every time, uh, every interval of six combos that you get. Let's read here. One hit coin will be given if you hit a burst ball and you can acquire up to eight hit coins in a game. So uh, burst balls, uh, depending on how many you get, I'm pretty sure the max you can get six combos uh, if you do the math correctly, out of 30. So if you were to hit all 30 in a row, that's five. Um, well, my, my brain's going to burst here. Burst ball, pun intended there. Um, five intervals of six. So you can get up to 10 burst balls. If, I'm, if my math is correct, you can get up to 10 burst balls. And if you hit eight of those burst balls, um, then you can get eight hit coins max per uh, arcade game. So out of the five arcade balls you get uh, before the time changes and they refresh, uh, you can get up to eight hit coins per arcade round. Um, most likely you're not going to hit 30 in a row. So uh, it'd probably be, if if you get lucky, you're probably going to get eight. If you're really lucky, you're going to get eight. But if you're uh, probably average, I'd say you probably get around five to a four to six hit coins per game that you play. And let's read on. Burst gauge will not increase when the burst ball is activated. So that's the same uh, if you had, uh, say if you had in the old arcade, you got a burst ball after you hit a perfect. Uh, during that small period of time of the next three pitches, you would be able to hit uh, three balls for extra bonus points. Uh, and then you could increase onward to the next burst ball. But that's changed now. So once the burst ball is activated... Um, it will not increase until you get the next six combos. I hope that makes sense. One bonus ball will be added if you fill the burst god gauge to the max. So you will get an additional bonus uh, ball if you fill it all the way up to the top. And then the gauge will be reduced when you miss the combo. So that's pretty much the same. I hope that made, made sense to you guys as I was trying to explain it. Now, arcade mode lobby UI improved. Let's take a look at this. So you can check the level reward and your personal records from the lobby. As you see here in the picture on the left side, there's a level ranking and you can check what level you're ranking up to. It still goes up to 100, so that's the same. And it goes by intervals of 5. So level 5, 10, 15, 20, and so on and so forth. You can check the other team's rank information from the stats button uh, on the bottom left there on the screen. And the function that checks the weekly pitcher who is planned to take the mound will be removed. I kind of like that, getting to see... Uh, the signature signature cards that you would be facing up next, just being able to anticipate who would be pitching the next week. Uh, kind of sad they took that out, but then again, I don't play arcade that much, so uh, it doesn't mean much to me. Arcade mode stats room UI improved as well, so when you check the stats room, this is what you will see, something similar to this. And it says you can check the ranking information from the newly added ranking all tab from stats. So on the top here, when you hit the stats button, on the top of the screen, you'll see ranking all, top 100, and my best record. So wherever you rank, that's where you can check ranking all. Uh, it's most likely not going to be top three like you see here in the picture. It's probably going to be uh, mid-range, anywhere in that area. And then looking at the next picture, 
It says you can check the best arcade mode records from my best record tab on the, the far right of the top right there. More towards the middle, actually. The records will be saved by season. The previous records will be saved as season one records. So uh, once the 2022 baseball season ends and the update to MLB 9 Innings 23, uh, I, as, if I, as I interpret this, it'll probably be refreshed and you'll have to make a new highest score for that season. I'm not too sure if you'll be able to see previous season records um, it says it will be saved as season one records. Not sure if you'll be able, to see, be able to see that anywhere or you'll be able to scroll on my best record. Uh, I would assume that'd be what happens. So you can look at the past years that you've played the game and see your records. Um, but that's up in the air. Now, weekly reward tiers added and reward changes. So this is a little more important here. The weekly re reward tiers have been added and the weekly reward has been changed. Now, there are new, just like when they updated the ranked, uh, ranked mode there are now master and iron so it's about time they kind of in integrated this into uh, ar arcade mode i was actually um, questioning when they were going to do this and they finally did add master and iron uh, just like they did in ranked so as you can see here the ranked rewards uh, nothing's too impressive here uh, the best thing to get is a team selected diamond pack and skill change tickets so really if you're a free-to-play team arcade mode is the way to go for you if you're grinding it out if you reach uh, gold, even you get an ultimate player pack, silver, you reach, uh, you get premiums as well as bronze. Um, but, uh, for higher up teams, this is not, it really is worth investing in to ranked, uh, or arcade, excuse me. Uh, it's not as worth it if you were to just play ranked all week. Uh, arcade mode has always been a secondary for me, even when I was just a free to play team before I started even spending, didn't play arcade that much. Uh, this is a great incentive to make the uh, arcade mode more interesting and different, but like I said, it's kind of like a Wii Sports ripoff where you have to hit a certain amount of balls, um, but that's just my opinion. Uh, the, the rewards are okay. I'm not sure what changed. They don't provide a comparison. Uh, before the new update, you guys can check what the rewards are now, uh, but this is what the new listed rewards will be when the arcade mode is updated on July 4th. And now level reward changes and arcade pass added. So just like the player pass that you can check in the uh, challenges, uh, they have added a arcade pass now that you can purchase. Not sure how much it's going to cost. I'd assume it's anywhere from $30 to $50. Uh, but every time you level up, you'll be able to get these rewards if you pay for them. Let's read here. The previous arcade mode level will reset on July 1st. You can obtain the previous level rewards, uh, like I just mentioned, before the new season opens. The level rewards will also reset when the new arcade mode season opens on July 4th, 12 a.m. Eastern Time. The updated level rewards will be available after the new season opens. And says here, paid level reward can be acquired by purchasing the arcade pass. Your purchase, the your you can purchase the pass by tapping the open pass button or the typo right there by calling to us. It's supposed to be pass open, but pa same thing, pass open button. And looking down here at the arcade level rewards, so these are the rewards you get for hitting each level all the way from 5 to 100. On the right side are the rewards you get if you buy the player pass for arcade, uh, and the left side is the free rewards. So more stars are added, which is awesome. Uh, before, um, it was only 50 stars for the first two, I'm pretty sure. 5 and 15 were only 50 stars. I have to check again, but all I know is that there are more stars just by judging by the looks of this. So the best thing you can get again is a diamond player pack um, for, at the end of level 100. Uh, not worth it for me, but for newer players who need diamonds, this is definitely a good investment to make playing in this game. Uh, arcade mode, the stars, uh, pretty sure the max was also 300, uh, but I'm pretty, sure if, I'm pretty sure that there are definitely more stars with 200 stars, more 200 star intervals. Uh, and then on the right side here, you definitely get better rewards for paying for the, the pass. Uh, best reward you can get there is a team selective diamond pack. So if you don't make it to legend, uh, you can get a team selected diamond pack if you purchase the pass. My personal preference, I would not purchase the player pass. Uh, I have never purchased a pass before. Um, I just, I'm just an organic guy. I like to grind the game and get everything just by playing. Uh, I will purchase, like I said, uh, like I do, you guys see my videos, Team Selective Signature Packs, Great Increase Tickets. Uh, I'll only purchase things that I will have 
uh, the most guaranteed success with or a perfect guaranteed success with. I do not like purchasing things uh, that give chance. Uh, other things such as um, blue tickets and green tickets, I purchased those, but uh, that's a different story because blues and greens are more difficult to come by. Now, this is probably the most important um, part of the new update. Premium skill change ticket mileage system is now added into the game. So the way this works, let's read down here. You can use the premium skill change ticket mileage system after June 30th at 3 a.m. Eastern time. Now in bold letters here, or bold uh, font, 10 skill change mileage points will be given when using the premium skill change ticket. The mileage points will not be accumulated by using other skill change tickets. So the only way you can get mileage for using uh, for premium, the premium skill change ticket mileage system is by using premium skill change tickets. They just wanted to make that clear. It's pretty um, common sense. When you reach certain mileage points, you will receive items as mileage rewards and it listed here. So after 100 mileage points, that's spending 10 premium skill change tickets. You will get five skill change tickets as a reward. When you use 20 premium skill change tickets, you will get one premium skill change ticket as a reward. Then when you use 30 premium skill change tickets, you will get another premium skill change ticket as an award. And then finally, when you use 50 premium skill change tickets, you will get a legendary skill change ticket. Now, as explained down here, the legendary skill change ticket item is brand new. It says you can acquire it through the new premium skill change ticket mileage, mileage system. Uh, as far as I know, that's the only way they're going to be giving this thing out. No word on if they're going to sell this in a pack or a bundle, they may possibly add it to the Team Select Signature Pack. I don't know. That's just my guess. And it says only applies to Black Diamond grade players. So this can only be used for Black Diamond players. It cannot be used on a normal diamond. It cannot be used on a Signature Diamond, Prime Diamond. It has to be used on a Black Diamond card. And whether it be Prime, Sig, or just normal, it has to be a Black Diamond. And it says it guarantees one Legend skill skill when using the item. I don't know what the rates are for this. It may depend. I don't know if there's a rate for which skill, uh, legend skill you will pull uh, out of. I'm not sure what the total is, but I'm pretty sure there are less than 10 legend skills for each uh, pitcher and batter. So I don't know the, the odds on that. But looking at the picture up here, uh, as you can see, uh, this is what the UI will look like when you premium skill change a new card. Uh, as you can see, you can look at both skill storage slots. We'll get into that a little later with regular skill changes. But here's my take on the skill change uh, mileage, the premium skill change ticket mileage system. It's nice to see that they're giving rewards for using premium skill change tickets. At the same time, I can see what they're doing behind this. Uh, it's good that they get rewards. It's not much. Getting one premium skill change ticket after using 20 uh, question is, where do you get those 20 from? Where do, you, where, where do you get those 50 from? How do you get those quickly? You purchase them when they go on sale. So this is definitely an incentive for uh, Com to us to get people to buy the premium skill change tickets when they come out. I may fall for this, even though I may regret it later on. I may actually purchase premium skill change tickets. As you guys know, my luck has just been non-existent, and I'd probably be making it worse by buying them, but I might have money on the side to spare. Anyway... My take on this, it's an incentive for Com to us to get people to buy more premium skill change tickets. And the honestly, if you don't get anything after 20 premium skill change tickets, um, you get one extra one to use. The legendary skill change ticket, again, I don't know the odds on that. Uh, it's a, a nice new addition to the game. I hope they implement it a little more. Uh, the best and easiest way to get premium skill change tickets without spending money right now is through the club crafting system if you have level seven club crafting or level level six or higher club crafting i'm pretty sure so you get one skill premium skill change ticket a week for free to play teams uh this is nice to get more premium skill change tickets free to play teams will love this especially the legend skill change ticket it's just going to take a long time to get to it so overall i like the new system but at the same time i do see what con to us is doing behind the scenes so if you want to spend money go ahead by all means it's your stuff do it uh but be wary uh, it is a incentive and it is a little bait trap, in my opinion, to get you to spend more money. Uh, so just be wise with your spending in this game. Uh, personally, I advise spending on things that guarantee success. Premium skill change tickets don't always guarantee that success. 
Moving onward to just regular skill changes. Uh, skill change ticket convenience is improved now. The improved skill change ticket convenience will be available after June 30th at 3 a.m. Eastern Time. Now, the skill change ticket UI will be improved. The image below is an example when using a skill change ticket. So, just like the premium skill change ticket picture we saw above, you can look at both skill slot storages if you have them uh, purchased. And reading down below here, it says choose the skill storage from the page using a skill change item. You can change the skill of the slot of your choice. So, right here on this page, you can choose between both skill storages, uh, which one you want to choose. Make sure you click on the right one after the update comes out on which skill change storage you want to choose. It's convenient now. You don't have to go to the lineup. You don't have to go to the team management and change the skill slot storage. You can do it right here from where you can skill change. Uh, the little red circle there, that's where you tap now in order to change the player you wish to skill change. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a nice little addition. You don't have to just click the card. I personally prefer clicking the card than trying to push a small button. But here's says a tap the upper right corner of the player card to select the player you wish to change the skill. Now, here, a skill change confirmation pop-up will appear when you try to change the skill. You can check the number of skill change, uh, number of a skill you wish to change and the skill storage from the pop-up. Now, I'm not sure what they mean by you can check the number of a skill you wish to change and the skill storage from the pop-up. Uh, I'm not too sure what that means. As far as I know, this pop-up will come up every single time you use a skill change ticket, which it sounds pretty tedious and pretty um, annoying, if I'm going to be honest. If this skill uh, change ticket pop-up uh, confirmation pops up every time you wish to change uh, a skill, uh, it's going to get pretty uh, bad. Uh, Skill changes ever have always been quick, snappy, and fast. They've gotten a little bit slower uh, originally from what they were, uh, but it's still okay. But if this pop-up is going to be coming up every single time, it's going to get a little annoying for people when they want to skill change players. I hope this isn't the case. I hope I'm misinterpreting it, but that's what I'm getting from what they're describing here. Now, it says here, if you haven't expanded the skill storage, you can select the second skill storage slot to expand so you do also get the option if you don't have the skill storage purchased you can op opt to purchase it from the skill change ticket uh, page here now this is a uh, skill storage usage improvement so this is no longer in the skill change ticket uh, when you use a skill change ticket this is in the team management section under uh, the lineup so this is you looking at the player uh, and all the details behind the card it says the way to select the skill storage slot will change from the previous rotation way to selecting the slot directly. All right. So you can now, let's just read on here. It says a lock system has been added to the skill storage. You can lock and unlock the slot of your choice. A lock icon will be displayed for the locked slots. So as you can see in the picture here on the bottom of each skill slot storage, you have the choice to lock and unlock the skills. So this will prevent you when you use a skill change ticket from choosing a skill storage that you don't want to change. So say skill slot storage had an end game set, say, or let's just take the picture right here. It has bad ball hitter. The player does not want to skill change that or accidentally hit anything that would take away uh, the skills and change it to a different skill set, um, whether it be premium skill change tickets or regular skill change tickets. So you can choose to lock that. Uh, you can also choose to lock both skill slot storages if you have the card finalized and you just don't want to touch the card at all. Now, looking down here, you cannot change the lock skills in the skill storage, as I explained. You won't be able to choose the skill slot storage that you have chosen to lock through the team management and skill slot storage button in under team management. Now here it says you cannot uh, you can unlock the slot store you can unlock the slot only from the skill storage page. So here in the skill change ticket page you cannot unlock the storage here. You would have to go back to team management, click on that card, and manually unlock the card's uh, skill slot storage from there. Uh, it's a little inconvenient, but it's just a way to keep it safe so you don't end up accidentally pressing the skill slot storage that you don't want to change. And if you do want to change it, you're going to have to go all the way back to team management, select the card, and select the skill slot storage. Now, as you can see here in this picture, let's read. If all the slots of a player's skill storage are locked, 
Like I said, you can lock both of the skill storages. The skill change ticket will be displayed as unavailable when selecting the player you wish to change the skills. So as you can see here in this picture, the three starting pitchers, one, two, and three, have both skill slot storages locked. So when you choose to skill change a player, it will not allow you to select the player, and you can only select players that you have uh, with unlocked skill slot storages. So that's really nice. When you open up the skill change ticket, it uh, can be hard trying to navigate to which players you think you need a skill change, which players you don't know if you need a skill change. This just makes it easier being able to navigate through that and identifying who you need to use skill change tickets on and who doesn't need them. Now, the save function while uh, changing skills added, this is a just in case a bug happens. If the game closes abnormally while changing the skills by using skill change ticket, the skill selection page will be auto-saved. You can, you can continue to choose the skills when you reconnect to the game. So, uh, my inter interpretation of this, uh, if you use a premium skill change ticket or a regular skill change, or just, sorry, just a regular skill change ticket, it doesn't say premium. So if you use just a regular skill change ticket, I've had this happen to me before, and the game just crashes, it freezes. Uh, when you restart the game, uh, it'll ask you when you go back to the skill change ticket, uh, it'll ask you if you want to keep the one that you had or the one that uh, forced the glitch or forced the, the game to freeze. So that's pretty nice there, and just in case you run into a bug, now, getting on to the uh, special training. Now, special training UI. This is something that the players have, uh, I know Jfish, AKs, and me as well. We've all been waiting for this. This will make special training so much easier. The UI has been improved, but let's read what they have updated here. You can now select up to 100 materials in the special training page. You can select the items and player cards appearing on the list to use for special training. So as you see here, there's an all tab in the middle of the screen. There's an item tab. You can choose just to use items. You can use just uh, you can choose just to use players. You can sort the uh, grade. You can also sort the time you got it at. Let's just read on down here. So it says you can check the detailed information of the cards you are using for special training by tapping the magnifying glass icon. So if you want to look at the player that you're going to special train, you can check them by tapping on the magnifying glasses that you can see on the top left of each uh, card icon. Also down here, it says the you can check the effect of each special training level by tapping the special training effect button. Uh, if you don't know what the levels do after each level of special training, you can check that by clicking on the button on the bottom middle of the screen, special training effect. Also here, you can sort the order of either the items that you want to use, uh, the cards that you want to use, or both if you have it under the All tab. The sorting function will be added to improve the display of the cards used for special training. So you can sort them by grade, level, ability, position, time, team, name, year, just like you would in the lineup, just like you would be able to uh, when skill changing, when upgrading. Uh, this is a nice addition. Uh, definitely makes it more convenient for players. Special training can get done so much faster now. Uh, instead of just doing 10 at a time, you can do 100 at a time now. And also down here, it says ex the exclude my team function and exclude special card function will be added to the special training auto select function. So the auto select function uh, is there as well. Uh, just like for uh, normal special training, or this is, yeah, just like before in normal special training, but now you have the option to exclude team cards and exclude special cards. So I'm pretty sure special cards constitute from vintages, primes, and sigs, as well as legends. So if you click the exclude special cards, it will not include those in your special training. Uh, and this also applies for bronze and normal vintage cards as well, I'm pretty sure, because when you do try to special train them, a pop-up does come up asking if you wish to special train them. So all vintage cards, all primes, all sigs, all legends are under that category of special cards. So that's very convenient. And now that you can use more cards every single time, when you choose to special train, the amount of levels that you'll be able to jump is going to increase. So as you can see in this picture here, level zero to level, level four, it is a possibility to jump from level zero to level four if you use diamonds and golds and you have all those cards so it's just going to make it so much faster uh, notice pop-up page will appear to notify you of the applied special effects uh, when special training has level uh, increased and now black diamond ui also has improved now black diamond this is something we've also been asking for you can 
use all black diamond pieces that you have to do a one-time thing with the card that you want to take the black diamond. You don't have to go 10 by 10 anymore. If you want to, say, upgrade this normal Mike Trout to black diamond, you can put all 60 pieces in at once if you have them, and then take them to black diamond immediately. So it, it's more convenient for the YouTubers. It's more convenient for all the players. It makes things quicker. Uh, we don't have to do cuts in our videos to cut away from special training or cut away from um, upgrading the black diamond. We can just put it in all at once and it can upgrade it. It's just so much more convenient. I'm so glad they added this into the game. It says black diamond page has been improved. You can use up to the maximum amount you need to train. You can choose black diamond piece and player card as much as you wish to use on black diamond upgrades. So in the right side of the screen here, if there are players, if there's another diamond Mike Trout, as you see right there, to use as black diamond material, you can select that as well. So you can include other cards. You can include the black diamond pieces. It's just a whole load of more convenience than previously. And that's just an awesome new addition, in my opinion. Definitely one of the better things Com to us has done uh, in the recent uh, months. Now, finally, just other small updates. The Power Ranking Tournament uh, game replay function has been added. The replay function will be available starting from the next Power Ranking Tournament. So I'm guessing this is just being able to view um, or replay the games, how they panned out. So we don't get to see how the games actually play. We only see the results of those games. So uh, I don't know who would really want to watch the replay of an auto game. Um, maybe if you're bored and have nothing else to do. Honestly, I'm just concerned with the results so I can get my uh, pick em sig if I get six in a row. But that's pretty cool. You can watch the games if you want to in a replay function available. They'll probably show it in a, new, a newer update coming later on. Uh, ranked battle auto game function has been added. So it's already been added. Uh, this is a, probably another typo of what they mean to say. It's been changed. All games will be selected at first when using the ranked battle auto game. You can check off games you do not wish to proceed. So at the moment right now, when you click on the auto game button on the top of the screen, when you go into ranked battle, you have to manually choose which games you want to auto play. Uh, now after this update, when it uh, updates on the 30th of the month, uh, you'll be able to click the auto game button and it'll automatically choose all 10 games that you have listed in the, the rank battle list. And then you can choose which games you don't want by clicking on them. So it's just another convenience right there. You don't have to go through all 10 games and click each individual one with the little buttons that it has. And finally, motion for batters after hitting has been added. So similar to the what they did with the catchers, the catchers had new animations after the last update. Now batters have new animations, whether it be a strikeout, uh, maybe a home run, I don't know, a ground out. There might be just different running animations, who knows, but that's pretty much going to do it for the brand new update. Uh, there's no new events yet, No, nothing uh, about uh, any new events or anything interesting like that, but I'm super happy that com to us did add the new um, SIGs to the game. Uh, no Red Sox SIGs, which uh, I, I meant to mention that earlier. I'm not too disappointed with that. I'm actually kind of glad they added. They didn't add any new Red Sox SIGs because if they did, judging by what they did with all the vintage players, they would have probably added a couple new Red Sox vintage starting pitchers, which is something that uh, Red Sox teams do not need. Uh, starting pitchers are all mediocre, and the relief, uh, the, the the vintage players would probably just be high stamina, low velocity, not as good. Uh, if I wanted them to add SIGs, I've mentioned this to a couple other people, I would really want to see them add a Jason Veritek SIG or a Jonathan Papelbon SIG would be pretty sick. Uh, just relief pitchers um, and catchers, as well as uh, first baseman. Uh, David Ortiz would be amazing. Uh, any any team would any Red Sox team would really uh, die for a David Ortiz card at this point. He's such a good card, and uh, Red Sox fans, he's just a big part of each and every Red Sox fan. So that's just my personal little uh, tangent right there but uh, no Red Sox SIGs I'm pretty pretty pleased with that if they did add SIGs I probably would have been a little more disappointed but I'm glad they didn't add new Red Sox SIGs but with all that said uh, that's going to pretty much do it for the video uh, thank you guys for sticking around uh, just uh, as a reminder if you guys want to see more videos like this where I do uh, long review videos over the new updates and give you my opinions and takes on what 
uh, the new update is about and how I feel about certain things and then just explaining all the details and all the ins and outs as best as I can. Uh, if you do like this type, type of stuff, please leave a like down below and let me know in a comment uh, that you'd like to see more of this and also go ahead and show your support by subscribing to the channel. Uh, thank you guys for watching this video. If you uh, did enjoy, please stay tuned for more videos coming up in the future. Uh, but with all that said, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and I'll see you guys all in the next video.